Hello, I'm Emma Louise Coffey and you're welcome to the Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. On this week's episode, Palace Kenry College farm manager Brendan Ryan joins us to give his experience of selective dry cow therapy, insights on what works well and lessons learned along the way. Yeah, so it is a 400 cow herd, um, I suppose high EBI freezing, but there would be probably 40% of the animals would have Jersey genetics through it. Um, it's grass based, uh, supplied 450 kilos of milk, milk solids last year and roughly 700 kilos of meal, 750 kilos of meal. Um, but it is, yeah, it is a grass based system. And looking to that, um, you mentioned 400 cows. So the the herd has grown um, at a fast pace over the last number of years. And you also mentioned 450 kilos of milk solids. So that's a quite a high output. Is it an immature herd you're dealing with, Brendan? No, it's a it's a very um, it's a very young herd. So this year, um, this year there will be 42, 43 percent of our heifers. Uh, we won't get to the 450 solids this year, but we'll. Su- We'd aim to supply 415, 420 solids this year. Um, I suppose last year cow numbers was 280 and 400 this year, and we'd, we'd aim to milk 430 odd cows next year. So I mean, it's a very, it's a very young herd. So um, and next year, would, the plan next year would be obviously when when that 40 percent, 40 odd percent gain to second lactation that we would supply 450 solids again next year. And looking then to the the cow numbers heading to 430 next year. What's the ceiling in terms of cow numbers you can carry on the platform, Brendan? Um, we have we have four sixty five cubicles, so I suppose that will and it will carry it'll carry that'll go that will bring us up to about uh, two point eight cows to the hectare overall on the milking platform. So that will fairly show it out. Now that we have a good picture of the farming system, we will turn our attention to the main purpose of today's conversation, and that is selective dry cow therapy. Brendan, you have been practising selective dry cow therapy for a number of years in Palace Kenry. Can you tell us more about this? Yeah, so I suppose this this is actually the, the fifth year we'll be using it, um, Emma Louise. So the first year would have been very, very low, dipped in with 24 cows, um, 50,000 cell count. And all of them animals would have been individually quarter sampled just to boost confidence, I suppose, in that if there was one quarter that would have been a lot higher than the rest of the quarters, you wouldn't, if she ended up getting mastitis or a high cell count extra, that you wouldn't be blaming the sealer that you would have known going in that they were all low. Like, um, I suppose the second year then, it was 100 cows, uh, 100,000, and that went very well. Um, the third year then was, it was a trial with more pack, um, 200 cows, so 200 cows, 100 had antibiotic and 100 with sealer and both of them had the same cell counts pretty much like they were comparing and contrasting so there was actually no difference in between both groups of cows um so that gave the extra boost then to go i suppose pushed out the limits last year um 86 percent of the cows last year we dried off with sealer only um 200 for the last three tests and 200 for overall for the year so i mean it was a it was a big jump but uh it, it it has worked. Now, cell count is running probably 30,000 higher this year than last year, but that was the facilities. It was facilities that was over the winter as well. We did get caught like. Um, with the expanding herd, I suppose we didn't. We were we were loose bedding cows and we had heifers on, we had heifers on flat and we were loose bedding cows on peat and straw. And I mean, there was a lot of moving around and rejigging and things. Um, we didn't get into our new cubicle shed until the 20th of February, so it was a bit tight until then. I, I guess just to pick up on, on I suppose the first point um, and it would be a red flag in terms of the advice you know a lot of people say you're starting off at the 50,000 and, and I suppose just to reiterate after using it for a number of years and seeing success ye moved up in terms of the threshold for um, SCC and cows. Just to pick up on a few things that you, you mentioned there, Brendan. So facilities. So you mentioned that, you know, you were under pressure with um, cubicle space. So you were using loose bedding, so peat, straw. So um, I guess ideally you're looking at cubicles for um, housing cows over the winter that have had sealer only and no antibiotic. Is that what you're telling us? 
Yeah, so I suppose you're you're nearly like you're you're looking at five percent extra cubicles maybe if you're going for if you're going in really big like with the uh, with dry with dry cow only like or with with sealer only. Um, you're looking at plenty of space, plenty of feed space, no cow under pressure. Um, and I suppose the big thing is the dry the the actual time. We'll say the the few days before drying her off and the few days after drying her off. They are the they are the crucial times like for in using um sealer only. Um in terms of we'll say selecting her a few days before obviously you've gone through your milk accordions and uh restricting her that bit um to lower your milk yield. Um then you're going for we'll say afterwards then that you're checking them twice a day, you're really really uh, walking through it I suppose not limiting them too much on silage that they're not poking at the feed space not splashing dirt up to tea um, that kind of that kind of way I suppose it, it, it all helps like you know and and looking to the, the records you, you, you've mentioned there Brendan uh, talk about milk recording across the entire lactation what do you do in Palace Henry? Yeah so we do we start off we start obviously start Kevin the, the end of January start February um, and we'd have a milk recording done uh, at the middle of middle of February, obviously to to catch the ones that would just every month, I suppose, every year, every month, the whole way through, um, we're milk recording, and I suppose acting on acting on every milk recording in terms of any any cow that's out that's up on last milk record, um, obviously maybe if it's up fifty or hundred thousand, fair enough, that that um, that can just be in. That's not much to be worried about, but I mean, like, if you're up five and six hundred thousand from the last one, they're all individually quarter sampled and sent off, and then treated in that quarter, um, recorded, and then milk recorded again the next month. And if she's consistently high in that quarter, we will dry off that quarter and milk her and treat it. It just it gives you it makes, uh, gives you the like you can make a more informed decision with with the results that you that you have recorded yourself as opposed to having that cow that you know is a high cell count. You don't know, is it a different quarter every time that's going, uh, showing up high? Um, it just, I suppose, it gives you the, to, the, to make the best decision, I suppose, you're, it's, it's all recorded and every, every month is act on, acted on accordingly. And and I guess Brendan, that completely echoes what Don Crowley would advise. You know, um, you know, around fifty percent of farmers are milk recording currently. I would expect that number is rising. But you know, I suppose his biggest piece of advice is that you do need to analyze those results. And you know, if if it's six times a year or if it's ten times a year, your milk recording, regardless, you really need to drill down into those figures and look at those high cell count cows. And I guess if you're recording once a month you have a very good picture as to where cows are at around the time of um, dry off um, looking then to the dry off period like you talk talk through I suppose how you're managing the cows in the days leading up to dry off and then also um, after dry off on the day that you're drying off those cows can you take us step by step through the procedure that you would employ at Palace Henry? So there would be there's obviously one of the lads we're milking. Um, the cows are, are separated, we'll say, the night before. So the, the main herd, we'll say, that would be continued to be milking afterwards would be milked in the morning. The parlour would be washed down, um, all done as normal. The Whoever was milking then would go for breakfast then or go for their break. Um, and that when you come back, you know that there are the cows that need to be dried off. Obviously, that there there's no one rushing, um, so there's two of us in the parlour, um, milking, and one person then is wiping down teeth. We use metal laid spirits and cotton wool, um, and there will be a table in the parlour so that every every cow in front of every cow, then you'd know that she is uh, either sealer only or she's antibiotic. That there's no mix-ups, and they're well marked and. I suppose the main thing is that you're not rushing anyway. That's the main thing that you know that right. I've it's it's now nine o'clock and you're allocating the whole morning to drying off a small small bunch of cows. That you're not putting in. You're not you're not going for a big bunch of cows and you're going to get, again going to get tired in the middle of it and then you're going to start rushing and you can that can lead to serious problems. 
And considering then the practice of selective dry cow therapy, are there any cows that aren't suitable outside of the obvious cows that are maybe you know higher cell count or have had cases of mastitis during the year yeah so definitely like i mean cows that would cows that obviously have dirty constantly have dirty dogs um that would have warts that would be lying on scraper pastures i mean they're just a no-no altogether because there's no way you can keep you can keep it clean like there's no way you can clean them enough that you can just go with sealer only you're gonna have you could you could you could have a very, very sick cow that evening. Like you could be tubing up um infection into them like without even knowing it. Later calvers also as well. We did see uh, we have seen a trend there last year, um, I suppose when we did go in hard with the the sealer only, but I mean ones that would be dried off, we'd say were fully dry there around the middle of December, twenty December, and ones that would be calving after St Patrick's Day on, on into April, um, it's questionable whether the Sealer only is is uh, working on them. Um, we have seen that some of them have have gone high. That it's in over over three months. I suppose it's 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 not it's not. I wouldn't think it's um it's a good idea to be just relying on sealer only to work on them. And and as you say, look, it's it's a very long time. Um, three months. That's ninety days. It's it's thirty days over the I suppose the recommended period. And I suppose it, it, the effectiveness of a, a sealer only in that scenario, you know, is is um questionable in terms of the efficacy. Looking then to heifers, what is your management strategy for heifers? Um, what what have you seen to work well or not well? Well, to work well, obviously, is is when they're being housed, that they go straight to cubicles and you have a, a cubicle, an animal or even a bit more than it and they're all trained up to lying on the cubicles and they would get sealed in, we'll say Christmas week or maybe just maybe the very start of January. You wouldn't want to be going any more than, I wouldn't be a fan of going into the middle of January to eat sealing heifers that are, that are um, starting to spring up a bit like, um, it's, it can, I mean, you can be causing trouble there as well that, um, at that stage as well, but I mean, last year wasn't wasn't in the ideal situation when heifers were housed and slacked until the start of January, and then they were teeth sealed afterwards. I suppose we we have um, encountered a few problems in in that area as well um, when they when they didn't have sufficient um, housing facilities. We didn't have sufficient housing facilities for the winter. So what I'm hearing from you, Brendan, is ideally they're on cubicles and they're trained to use the cubicles. And also then where you're sealing them, you're sealing them five to six weeks prior to calving. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And like that, again, I suppose maybe have your if there is later ones identified and leave them go the extra bit and uh, maybe maybe divide it, do it in two days as opposed to, to getting them all done first, I would say it'd be more effective. And looking then to the plan for 2020, um, when do you intend to start drying off? Um, you know, what are you identifying as the ideal um, dry cow period, uh, Brendan? Yeah, so this will be usually there, there is um, obviously 42, 43 percent of them, the herder heifers. So they will, I will start drying off um, a good shot of the heifers at the end of November. Um, and I mean, that will be we'll be looking closely at the calving dates, um, also to to make sure that they're not going over that, that three month three month mark. Um, and I suppose we are we're in we're nearly there with a the rotary parlor at the moment. It's just don't know whether we'll be milking in it for the winter or not yet. So I suppose if we are moving into the rotary milking parlor in December for some some um number of cows, we won't be going as hard on dry cow therapy for them as it's you're moving into a new parlor it's, it can be quite dangerous like. and then looking to um, selective dry cow therapy as a practice you know we're all aware that in January 2022 um, you know blanket dry cow therapy is not going to be an option on dairy farms and you know more and more farmers are moving towards selective dry cow therapy in preparation for this from your experience over the last number of years and the experience in the Palace Kenry Dairy Unit, can you maybe give us your top three tips on how farmers can work with this practice in order to maximise the efficacy of the treatment? Yeah, so, I mean, number one would be starting small anyway. Um, start low. Um, obviously, have 
number one has to be Milka Gordon. Like there's no there's no shooting in the dark at it like that. We'll say consistently low under fifty thousand or I would start out maybe eight to ten percent of the herd. Um quarter sample all them animals and give yourself the confidence that right, they're they're low on all quarters. I can do the sealer only and then when they cave down then um test them again to give yourself that extra boost in confidence. Um yeah, definitely um definitely wouldn't go under a hundred thousand anyway. Um with that enough, I suppose. And I suppose tips uh, as I said, um like three, four times a year milk carton is probably not enough for dipping into tri- uh, selective trichotherapy in terms of doing the last recording in September and starting drying off in November. There can be infection picked up between September and November and you could be drying off the wrong cow with sealer only. I guess, look, we've taken a lot from the conversation today and from from your perspective, this is what's working for you, Brendan. I think your, your last um, piece of advice is really, really good in terms of, you know, don't try and do the whole herd. It's starting small and, you know, keep a low threshold. So you're looking at your really healthy cows in terms of other health. And quarter sampling is going to give you the confidence to make the right decision so you know that the cow is low on all quarters. Thank you, Brendan, and look forward to catching up with you next spring to see how it all fared out. No problem. Thanks a million. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to Brendan Ryan for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. You can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. And for more information, go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey and join me next time for your Dairy Edge.